Now, my real advice, I think it's always important to say that because I'm not one of these, go to the gym, what's your excuse? Because those people are insane. Time, I'm in the ball, a hole here. Welcome to my crazy YouTube channel. In case you're new, we talk about gym and we talk about fitness and we talk about working out and we talk about feeling good and ensuring that positive worms come bursting out of your stomach. Not literally, that's like a movie from the 80s. Remember Tremors? They didn't come from your stomach. Do not worry about it. I have gone through all the comments recently because it's really nice. People comment. I try to reply to as many as I can. And I, I saw a theme, a theme of question for people that have sort of not necessarily just started out at the gym, but encountering things for the first time and wondering to themselves, is this a normal thing that should be happening when I go and work out and train? And unfortunately, the answer to many of them was yes. So I was like, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a bunch of them. I'm going to put them into a list because YouTube, YouTube loves lists. And we can just talk about them so that when you do encounter them, there's no need to be worried. You can figure out what you're meant to do. And from there, you'll only get better as a human being. Put the check in the post, I'm like your mum or your dad. But yeah, anyway, look, here is 10 unavoidable side effects that basically happen when you start working out. Number 10 is Dom's delayed onset muscle soreness. That is basically the pain in your muscles uh, when you've had a... I don't want to use the word good workout because it's not a quantifier that you have had a good or bad workout. It just means you've broken the muscle down, which is what you do when you are training, and it hurts. If I do that for 10 minutes, probably longer... It's going to start hurting because I have nerve receptors and it all ties into that. Now, the reason I wanted to bring this up and put it first is a massive question I get all the time is, Simon, I just went to the gym for the first time and I feel like I'm hit by a bus. Is this right? Is this normal? Have I injured myself? Am I a buffoon? Am I a jabroni? Do I have to go to the doctor? Am I going to die? And I'm like, you're not going to die, but you know, you may have something else wrong with you. So make sure you get yourself checked out. Should you so believe that you need to? It's just part and parcel, right? When you first start working out, you hate doms, doms hurt. You walk around kind of like the hunchback of Notre Dame because none of your body and muscle parts are working. And then when it kind of starts to fade away, because obviously your body will catch up, it's really, really smart, you will start to yearn for the doms. <laughs> you will, again, like I say, it will become, well, I haven't got doms, I can't have had a good workout, because something happens to your voice. Um, and the way you deal with it is exactly that. Just accept it at first, and then realize down the line you're going to miss it. It's a bit like a relationship that goes wrong. Uh, that, no, that doesn't work at all. It's a bit like a relationship in reverse. So when you first have it, you, don't, you want to go away. I don't want to be with you anymore. And then you miss it once it once it's vanished. Does that make any sense? Probably not. But yeah, it's just that's all it is. I'm going to say that 99.9% .9 of all people are going to suffer this quite badly when you first start working out. But yeah, it becomes this amazing thing. Like I had it the other day. I woke up on Tuesday and it was, and I had real bad doms in my chest. Honestly, you may as well have given me an Olympic medal. I was so pleased with myself. I don't know what I did. You know, I trained hard, I trained intense, but I always try and train hard and intense. But then I kind of beat myself up, right? See, I'm proving it to you right now because I was like, well, did I not train intense enough the week before? And the answer is clearly no. So more for me, somebody put my head in the toilet. <laughs> Number nine are shoulder injuries. Now, all injuries suck, but when it comes to shoulder injuries, every single person I know that goes to the gym, be them bodybuilders, crossfitters, uh, just sort of goes three times a week and enjoys it for what it is. So, you know, casual, novice, hardcore, advanced. Everybody has either suffered a shoulder injury, has a shoulder impingement, or just every now and then goes, oh, my shoulder's feeling a bit off. The shoulder is a crazy, complicated joint muscle that maybe we'll get into one day that can just go wrong on a whim. And you can hurt your rotator cuff and your supraspinatus and your subscapularis. Oh my gosh, it is a minefield. The first major injury I had in the gym was shoulder injury when I tore my subscapularis tendon, had to have surgery, it absolutely sucked, and I wasn't even doing anything that wrong. I mean, I'm sure I was in hindsight. There were things I could have done to try and protect myself better. But still, it's not like I, again, I didn't get a weight and smash it into my shoulder and then go, well, Simon, what did you do that for? I was just lifting weights and it went. I just think it's something that's going to come along. So what you absolutely should be doing, in my opinion, always want to stress that, is I believe they're called YTWs, maybe YWTs, I can't remember. Essentially, what you want to do is, I'll make sure I get some Google images, but you want to be Superman, hands in front of you. I can't do it too much because I got my, green, uh, my camera lens. You want to be plain, so I'm just going to do it. Arm straight out like that, and you want to be parachute guy. <laughs> <laughs> Superman plane parachute guy. And what you want to do is you want to lie on a bench and you put your hands out in front of you for, for 10 seconds. Hands here for 10 seconds. I know we've completely screwed up the illusion of this camera. Who cares? And you want to do parachute man for 10 seconds. And what I do is I do it for a minute 
Um, so yeah, 10 seconds, 10 seconds, 10 seconds, 10 seconds, 10 seconds, 10 seconds. So two sets of eats. I give myself sort of a 20 second rest and I do it three times, uh, three sets. I do it with 1.25 uh, kilogram weights in my hand, but you can, I would, don't, don't start with nothing and see where you get. But if you just do that, whenever the hell you want, you can do it at the start of the workout and end of a workout. I prefer to do it at the end, but I'm not going to dictate that to you. It just reinforces the stabilizer muscles and everything else around your shoulders. It's not going to protect them, but it is going to help. And another thing that I would say you should always do before working out is warm up your rotator cuff. And that's when you come out like a penguin, right? Again, I'll try and make sure I put something on screen, but you do that, you do that, you do all this kind of crazy stuff. People will look at you like uh, you're nuts, but you're not gonna get injured. And to me, that's pretty good. Number eight, not something that I've ever cared about, but people ask is hand calluses. So of course, I mean, I should have probably taken a picture of mine. Maybe I remember, but yeah, I've got hand calluses here. Here, here, here. My hand looks like, well, my hand looks like an alien xenomorph is about to pop out of it, but I just don't care. I just couldn't give two hoots. To me, it's like war scars. You're lifting heavyweights and your hands are brittle and bruised because you've done, you've done a good job. I mean, the solution is to wear gloves. I don't like wearing gloves in the gym. I actually think they make things slippery. Uh, I would, I, I, if you want to wear something like that, I would go for Versa grips. They're way expensive, and man, when you first buy them, you're going to want to smash your head into a wall. But they are very, very good and far superior to anything else you can get. But yeah, you can wear gloves. I just don't like wearing it. I just don't think it helps you train. I think you get a much better, well, whatever you want to say, just doing it, like I say, with Versa grips or naked hands are always good. But that's just part and parcel. You can get a pummel stone if you want to do that and pummel that stuff off or use moisturizer. Nothing wrong with that. Some people are like, I don't want to do that. I'm a man. I'm like... What's that got to do with anything? Are you living in 1949? Number seven is you start going to the loo all the time, both for a wee and the other thing that comes out of your ass. Well, that just stands to reason, doesn't it? If you're drinking the extra water to remain hydrated and that your muscles needs when you start working out and you're eating the excess food, it's got to go somewhere. It's not all processed. There is wastage. As you know, it's just something you've got to accept. Now, the good thing about the weeing part, the urinating, is your body actually, not massively, but it does get used to how much water you're giving it. So you'll start to wee less and less, but you'll still be weeing more than more uh, than you were doing before. And yeah, the other side is, as long as you're not going, if you're going 12 times a day, then once again, I'd definitely go check a doctor. I'm not saying that it should be an abnormal amount, but of course you will, again, you'll just have more waste to get rid of. So the way you deal with it is you go to the toilet and you get rid of it. Number six is that now you're absolutely starving and hungry all the time because of course you are. You've stoked your fires. Your metabolism is going to be working faster because your exercise has just gone through the roof and your body needs fuel. Never forget you're a car and that's what calories are. They are the amount of fuel you need in a day to ensure that you lose weight, uh, put on weight, blah, blah, blah. So you have, you know, you have energy in the gym. When I say deal with it, again, it all depends on your goals. If you're trying to put on weight, eat more. If you're trying to lose weight, you know, eat less. But, you know, do not rob yourself of the magic of 2020 just because some people say not to. Now, of course, there are dangers and worries with everything in this life. You can't pretend otherwise. But would, it's better for you to have a diet drink than it is for you to have some chocolate, right? When you're super hungry and eating a diet drink will absolutely fill you up, right? Because it's a um, carbonated drink and your stomach will go... And <laughs> I don't know what that was. And things will happen. But if you really want to stay on the health and narrow, or the healthy path, I should say... Just eat a bunch of salad. And oh, that sounds ridiculous. But if you make a massive, massive bowl of salad and you put loads of spinach in there and stuff, the amount of fiber will probably fill you up. So, you know, there, there's ways and means. Don't suffer is what I'm saying. If you want to use um, sweeteners, natural sweeteners that have zero calories, and you should. We've mentioned uh, zero fizzy drinks. There are these jellies that you can buy that have four calories in them. You can have a four calorie jelly. It will be all right. They sound delicious. Hey, you could even add in stuff like light cheese. I have a light cheese slice in all of my wraps, and I think it's got like 25 calories per, per slice. 25 calories, you can probably get away with it. So my point is, think outside the box. Don't think you just have to eat white, green, white, green, white, green, you know, chicken veggies chicken veg chicken veg rice ensure that you are satisfying yourself not only on a hunger level but also on a taste level because it is really important number five is acne now i oh i, I struggle talking about acne because people go absolutely nuts and they go it's all about hormones and carbohydrates it's, i mean maybe on a fundamental level it is but that's not how the human body works i've talked about how if i drink loads of caffeine i break out in spots and recently i was here there and everywhere i was tired I had a lot of long drives to do so i had to have more carbs surprise surprise out came my spots and yeah that could tie into my cortisol levels but caffeine will raise your cortisol levels i don't want to get into it I've done a video about caffeine we're not doing 
doing it here. But some people will get it just from sweating in the gym. Lots of people I know get it from sweating in the gym. Um, you can get those sweat wick t-shirt stuff, whatever they call it, wick sweat away. They're pretty good, quite expensive, but they do a good job. But ultimately, the best thing to do is just try and have a shower as soon as you finish working out, right? Stands to reason. Wash your body, um, you know... <laughs> There's probably some stuff you could buy that you could put on straight after, but I think the best bet is just to get home and uh, and just wash it off, you know, shower. It's just one of those things that does suck. It's a necessary side effect, which is what this video is all about. Number four is sometimes going to the gym and working out and training will suck and you'll want to quit. That is a side effect. I'm not going to pretend otherwise. You will have had a bad week eating or you won't be seeing progress or the scales will go up. We just look in the mirror and go, well, you look like a flubber goo, you absolute wank stain. And it's like, don't, don't talk to yourself like that. And you'll feel down. And weirdly, when you do feel like that, it should motivate you in a strange way. It's like, well, okay, well, I've got to fix this to go to the gym, but that's not what you'll do. You'll be like, actually, I don't want to do this anymore at all. And the best thing you can do when you experience that is actually maybe don't go if you really don't want to go. Maybe not going will allow you to miss it and you'll want to go back. But protect your mental health is what I'm saying here. Protect your mental health. Now, my real advice, I think it's always important to say that because I'm not one of these, go to the gym, what's your excuse? Because those people are insane. But, you know, the best thing you can do when that happens is to go regardless. You control your body. Nobody stops you. Like, you know, if I want to do this... I just do it. Did it make any sense? No. But my brain, I told my brain I wanted to do it. And so I did it. So you can force yourself to go to the gym. Force is a poor word. And when you're there, you're probably going to have a good workout because the endorphins will hit and, and you'll feel good. And then your motivation will slowly come back. But accept it for what it is. Don't beat yourself up. Don't think you're a bad person. Don't think you're a loser. You're not a quitter or any of these words. It happens to every single one of us. Nobody is on the path constantly. That's not a realistic thing. So take stock of it. Try and figure out why. Maybe there's something else going on in your life. And then make sure you go back when you feel good and ready. And it will all start up again. And number three is the opposite to that. Is that sometimes you'll get obsessed with it and it will ruin your life. Put your hands up if you've done that before. My hand is in the air in case you're walking around your house doing the cleaning or something. I know people do that. It's very nice of you. I appreciate it. Make sure you get that spot in the corner. Make sure that you're enjoying all of this stuff, right? As this kind of ties into the last entry too. If you stay in as positive mindset as possible, you are more likely to go because it becomes, you know, the equivalent of going to Legoland or a theme park or Disney World or whatever. You know, it's something that you want to do and therefore you shall do it. It's the nature of life. Hence why really we just want to eat crap food all the time because it tastes amazing and you get an amazing chemical release. Um, I've been there and I can tell you it's no fun. It actually probably hinders your gains because you're so on point. You're so stressed all the time that your body actually can't grow in the way that you want. And just remember, it's okay to miss a meal here and there. I'm talking about the exception to the rules. You obviously have to be dedicated and serious most of the time because that's just how it works. Marathon, not a sprint, boring, boring. But it's okay to miss a meal. It's okay not to have the most devastating workout you've ever done in the life. It's okay not to have doms. It's okay to have a pizza here and there if you think you need it. You know, you can cheat on this stuff. It's no one is, you are in competition with yourself and you don't owe an excuse to anybody. I find a lot of people, uh, you know, almost wear it like a badge of honor or something, which is cool. You should, I do that a little bit as well. But if they don't do that, it's like they've let themselves down or let other people down and you haven't. It's just going to the gym at the end of the day. Right, health and fitness is massively important, but it's not the be all and end all, as long as obviously you're not, you know, in, in terrible shape, because then you could get ill and nobody wants that. Um, but yeah, try and take it for what it is. Just use it as a good thing. It's meant to be a good thing. Don't let it drag you down. And number two is you start watching videos like this. I just made me laugh that one. I had to put it in. But it's true, right? Because I did it. I mean, I've been into fitness for ages, but as soon as I stumbled across YouTube fitness videos, I was like, well, now I want to watch more. And now I watch them all the time. And sometimes I watch videos just to reaffirm what I already know. But then it makes me feel good. And I go, well, that guy's pretty big and jacked. And I thought the same as him. Therefore, I have decided I am big and jacked, even though we don't look anything, anything like each other. To deal with it, stop watching. Please don't. And number one is you have to deal with a bunch of idiots who keep telling you, oh, well, when you stop lifting weights, you're going to get really fat. That must be the number one stereotypical thing that is never going to go away, especially from the older generation, who I guess didn't know about gyms. And now they're like, oh, what's this spangly metal place with, with plates and weights in it? All the time. You can't turn diamond into, or pencil into lead into diamond or whatever. And you can't turn fat into muscle and vice versa. It's not true. The reason people get out of shape when they stop lifting weights and they stop exercising is because they keep their diet up. So they're getting all this surplus calories and they get fat. Because that's what happens. That wasn't the gym. That wasn't stop working out. I get it all the time. Oh, Simon, you can be well saggy one day when your muscles start to sag. Well, if I change my diet, I'll be all right. They just vanish. They don't vanish. They just get smaller. What do you think happens? Do you think we're crapping them out like the toilet stuff we talked about earlier, which we actually did do in this video? But you're always going to have to deal with it. No matter what your age, 
Somebody is going to put that on you and you have to do what I do, which is smile and nod. But in your head, you're like, man, I would, I would rip you in two right now. Or you can try and tell them. But let me tell you, it is not worth it. They don't care. They, they just think you're crazy. And you've come up with some explanation to justify it to yourself. So look forward to talking to that guy. There you go, 10 Ida Vodaboy side effects of going to the gym, but hopefully now you know how to deal with them, so everything's gonna be okay. Like the video, share the video, smash the subscribe button, get in that description, there is links for Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, uh, merchandise, if you feel like supporting, awesome. If not, just click another video, YouTube loves that as well. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you soon.